to my channel. My name is Erica, and in today's video, I am bringing you two looks with the Nomad Cosmetics Berlin Underground Palette. Now, this is no longer available, which is a real bummer because this was, for quite a while, my favorite Nomad Cosmetics palette in my collection, but now the Royal Europe has taken that spot. I think this is one of the most interesting, beautiful, and amazing color stories I've ever seen from Nomad, and that I own in my collection. I love the earthy, grungy, sexy vampiness of this color story. And I like the fact that there are warm and cool tones in this palette too, that's really fun for me. Now, when I first got this palette, I was a little taken aback because the majority of the shades in here are satin, satiny in consistency. And you know, like the only real matte shades, this one's a matte and I think that is a matte too. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell with these shades. So I thought, well, I, you know, I don't usually put like satins in my crease and on, in my transition area, how am I gonna, huh? But as I started playing with the palette, I realized that the satins do, I mean, they have a sheen to them, but they do kind of just perform like matte shades. And there's also, you know, enough uh, sh sheeny stuff in there that they're like shimmers too. So they're really unique shades. I really like them. And I'm really excited to put these two looks together. And I, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm gonna do for this look. I will put this shade here called Club Knocked towards my outer V area. Then I'm gonna put this shade here called Techno in the center. And then I'm gonna jazz things up with this green shade right here called NDW, putting that towards the front of the lid. And then for the second look, I'm gonna be using some of these like golds and bronze shades. So I think that'll be really fun. So yeah, I do have my brows done and this eyelid is primed, of course, in the P. Louise eyeshadow base in Rumor 01. So let me grab my Refer 13 and I'm gonna go into Club Noct, putting that in my outer V. And I probably should make sure that my primer, oops, my primer is not all creasy. It is a little bit. And I don't know what has gone on with this palette, but it's really creaky. Like, let, let me show you. It's like, makes noise when you open it which it's not that big a deal, but I don't know if maybe the spine got funky or something broken. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, but it's always made that weird noise when I open the palette. So let's start by putting this out here. And this is a pretty pigmented shade. So a little bit of this goes a long way. It's really nice. And I think this is, this is a matte too with some sparklies in it, like the sequin mattes. The sparklies don't really hang out on the lid but you can definitely see the sparklies in the pan. And uh, I just, I don't know, I, I was not sure that I was gonna get this palette, but I think I got it on sale and oh man, I love it. I've used it several times and it's just awesome. This is a palette I have pulled out in the past, like when I go on date night with the hubs, <laughs> I'll create a look with this palette. Cause I just think it's got the, you know, sexy vampy date night vibes to it for sure. Uh, I live in Oregon and my family and I are huge fans of the Oregon Ducks, football team, basketball team, any sport that the Ducks play, we're fans of it. You know, I grew up loving the Oregon Ducks, uh, University of Oregon. My mom went to the University of Oregon. And so, you know, it's just always been a school and a team and teams that we just love. Well, about 13 years ago it was, uh, the football team was really good. This was when Chip Kelly was coaching. Uh, Darren Thomas was the quarterback. LaMichael James was playing. Kenyon Barner. And then I'm trying to, Cliff Harris, Casey Matthews, Jeff Mail, like really good football players. And you guys may not be interested in this at all because you may not like football, but I do. And so these three guys created a music group called Sup With You Girl. <laughs> so funny. And they created two songs. The first one was called I Love My Ducks. And the second one was called I Love My Ducks Return of the Quack. And it's kind of based on like, the sound of it is kind of based on Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison. And, you know, at that time, we were getting ready to go like to the Rose Bowl. And I think we did one year we went to the Rose Bowl and lost. And then the second year, I think we made it to like the national championship game and lost. <laughs> So it just sucked, you know, but we'd had such a great season. So we were all really excited and thinking that, you know, we're going to take it all the way, baby. Anyway, these three guys made these two like rap songs for the ducks. 
and I'd forgotten all about them for some reason. I just forgot about those songs. And last night I was talking to Shawnee and Jan on Marco Polo, but Jan goes to bed pretty early. So it was just <laughs> Shawnee and I just back and forth. And I brought up that song, the songs from Sup With You Girl. Oh, I was wearing my I Love My Ducks sweatshirt and it says SWT with a little girl symbol uh, for that gr little group. I'm gonna go into the shade here called Techno and put that right in the center. And I will blend the edge of that out a little bit more. Anyway, so I was telling Shawnee about it and <laughs> so I thought I had to go to the store. So I thought I'm gonna listen to that song while I go to the store. And it's just so great. It's so fun, you know, like, uh, they talk about the different players in the rap song and I don't know, it's just really fun. And I got pretty emotional because my mom was a huge Oregon Duck fan, just huge, you know, and I don't think I've ever used techno before. This is so gorgeous. It's got a really pretty sheen to it. Lovely. And it's really meshing well with the black shade. Um, and, you know, we went to all the home duck games for years from the time my son was probably like three up until my mom passed away. Every single U of O home game, football game, we would go to. And uh, my dad worked for a company that would give the employees free tickets to the duck games. And my dad is not a duck fan because he went to Oregon State University, which are the beavers. That's where my son goes. <laughs> And so my dad's like, I don't want to go to the games. And my mom's like, well, me and the kids will go. So my mom would take me and the kids to the duck football games. And I will never forget when that song, both of the songs, I Love My Ducks and then Return of the Quack came out. That's all my mom wanted to do was to sit and listen to those songs. So quite frequently, I would play the songs on my phone for her. And like, as we were getting ready to go to the duck games, we'd listen to that those songs. And it was just so fun. And um, I have a lot of really fond memories of that. So last night when I was listening to it, I got a little, little choked up just thinking about all the fun that my mom and I and the kids would have at the Duck Games. It was great. And that was just, you know, those seasons that were kind of, it's kind of the heyday of the ducks. It was wonderful. So now I'm going to go into this shade here called NDW and put that towards the front here. Um, and I can remember like, my son <laughs> when he was really little, you know, three, four, five years old. Uh, we would sit in the same spot every time, the same tickets, and they were pretty, pretty decent seats. And the same people would sit next to us. Um, this guy and his wife, Eric and Bobby. Oh, that's really pretty. I've never put this combination together on my lids before. This is nice. I really like it. It's really fun. And Eric, the guy was huge. I mean, he was like six, seven, really tall guy and big guy, you know, really a neat, neat couple. And Bobby, his wife, was a bo professional bodybuilder. So she was like, sun's out, guns out. You know, I loved her. <laughs> she was so great. And Braden would stand up on the bench sometimes so he could see, you know, because he was a little, little guy. So he'd stand up where we were sitting and like watch the game. Now, anytime they would score, Eric, this huge big guy, <laughs> would turn to Braden and chest bump him <laughs> when Braden was like three, four, five, six and almost knocked Braden on the ground. And Braden just loved it. He's like, will you chest bump me, chest bump me. <laughs> so great. I love this, this is a really pretty combo, but that is really harsh. So what I will do is grab a clean brush. I'm trying to think which one, I think I'll use this one here, this little, little one, and just go around the edge of this so it doesn't look quite so stark, harsh line. Just very lightly blend, not a ton, just a little bit. But yeah, that, you know, I just have so many fun memories. And I was shocked when my son decided to go to Oregon State University. Like he applied at the University of Oregon and Oregon State. I think those are the only two schools he applied for. And he got in, obviously, at Oregon State. He got in at U of O too. But he just decided he was going to go to Oregon State and be a beaver, which my dad was thrilled about. But I, I know if my mom was alive, she'd be like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> my mom did not like the beavers, okay? <laughs> like, you either like the ducks or you like the beavers. I don't know that anybody really likes both of the schools. I mean, I kind of had to learn to like the beavers because my son is one now. So I'm kind of a anomaly, I guess. But yeah, my mom would be like, what are you doing? You're going to Oregon State? I mean, she'd be very, very proud of him. <laughs> but we laugh about it all the time that my mom would be like, what? You're a beaver? 
How is that possible? Okay, I think I'm done. This does look a little weird to me, but I think as I apply my base products and stuff, I can make that look a little less strange. <laughs> so I'm gonna go off camera, of course, clean this up, do my other eye, the rest of my face, and I will come back. So this is finished look number one, and I really like how this look turned out. I've never put those three shades together before, and I really like how they all played together. So I'm gonna show you the palette again, move on to look number two, but let me show you just a few things I put on my face for this finished look. On my lips, I used a gloss from Dose of Colors. This is in the shade Almond Butter. I just thought I'd tone down my lip today, my lips today. I was gonna go with a black liquid lipstick, but I don't I don't like how that looks. So I just went with this gloss and I, I love it. I think it's very nice. For my lower water lines, I used, uh, let's see, LA Girl Ultimate Eye Intense Stay Auto Liner in the shade Totally Teal. I just obviously felt like the teal would work well with my uh, the green part of the eye look. And then for my upper lid liner, I used the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Waterproof Liquid Liner in black. Love this. And then I'm still using my uh, Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effects Mascara. Jeez. And then for my inner corners, I did grab, of course, my Sugar Drizzle Mini Glow Cube Palette. And I used this shade at the top here. It's kind of like a, well, it looks pink right now, but it shows up very green, like a bright teal on my skin, so uh, go figure. So now let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. Nomad Cosmetics Berlin Underground. Loved the three shades I put together. I had never used Techno before. It's a beautiful silver, very sheeny shade. This shade works really well. This is uh, a matte. I mean, there's really not any satinness to it at all, but there is a little bit of sparkle in the pan. The sparkle just falls off your lid. So I feel like there is, you know, a, another true matte in here. And then this shade is absolutely stunning. This doesn't have as much sheen as this one does. At first I was like, is that gonna look weird? But I do think it turned out really nicely, really fun combination of, of shadows to put together. I do think I could have blended the outer edge a little bit better, but this is what I got today. So, Without any further ado, let's get on to look number two. So let's get back into the Nomad Cosmetics Berlin Underground palette for my second look. And I'm pretty sure there's two shades I know I'm going to use for this look. This one right here, which is a matte, and then this one right here, which is this beautiful satin shade, because the majority of these, like I mentioned in the first look, are satin shades. Let me grab my glasses so I can see the names of the shades. Okay, so this one is called, oh boy, Orianen, Ori, no, Orianen, okay, it's O-R-A-N-I-E-N-S-T-R-A-B-E, it's Orianen Straba, I'm thinking, I think that refers to a street name, is that right? And then this is called Love Parade. Um, I'm just trying to decide, because there's so many beautiful options in here, but I think what I might do is put Hansa on because I don't think I've ever used that shade uh, next to this and then I might use one of these or maybe that one okay I'm going to use this in my transition area then I'm going to use this shade this shade this shade and that shade called Kreuzberg I, I might put that in my inner corner I'm not sure exactly I'm just trying to use different shades in here than I've used in the past because I kind of get hung up on certain shades but I want to branch out so this, of course, is going down first in my transition area. I do have both brows done, and this eyelid is primed, of course, in the P. Louise Eyeshadow Base Rumor 01. So, go into this matte shade. This is, like, I think one of the only true mattes in here. Is this this one? No, I think that's that's kind of like this. They're not, they're not, like, super satiny, but they're not real mattes either. They just have, like, this really subtle sheen to them, both of those shades do. Okay, I think I have way too much on the brush. Nah, I think that's okay. All right, let's get going here. I just got home from work and it's Friday and I'm so happy about that. I am thrilled. So I was going to film this morning. That's typically what I would do is get up early and film. And I just could not get up. I couldn't get up. So I ended up going back to bed for a while. And then I, rather than like, hitting snooze again I just shut my alarm off and so at like 7 15 I woke up in this just panic that I was not going to be to work on time which I was not but it wasn't as late as I thought it was going to be and I just didn't put any makeup on I just got up took a quick shower threw my clothes on and out the door 
didn't even make my lunch or anything. I went to a food truck and got myself a chicken Caesar salad and it's so good. Oh, the, their chicken Caesar salads are so good at that food truck. Oh my gosh. I'm really lucky because I work downtown in the city that I live in and there's lots of really good places to eat downtown and these uh, like little courtyard areas with different food trucks and all kinds of different food, you know, really good stuff and very diverse food options too, which I love that. You know, you can have all kinds of different things from all over the world, you know, it's really cool. And this is blending beautifully, it's really nice. It's kind of that really pretty terracotta shade, you know, kind of brownie orange, very, very nice, I love it. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done with that. I might go back and blend a little bit more around the very outer edge there as I continue to go on with the look. So now let's go into Love Parade and deepen up the outer V with that. We also have a place downtown called Voodoo Donuts. I don't know if you guys have a Voodoo Donut shop where you live. Um, I used to think it was just an Oregon thing, but I think it's across the country now, right? Or has it always been across the country and I'm just ignorant and don't know that? I don't know. But uh, such good donuts and all different kinds of options. So I text my husband and I said, babe, should I stop at Voodoo on the way home? And he's like, Oh, you don't have to twist my arm. Go ahead. And he really likes the maple bars with the bacon on the top, which that's not my favorite. But he's like, definitely get one of those. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I just walked down to Voodoo because it's just a couple blocks down from my office as I left today. And I go in and I'm looking at the different options. And, you know, you can get like a classic dozen, which is just like the classic type of donuts. I'm going to go back in with this brush. You know, like... I don't know, maple bars and cake type donuts and chocolate covered donuts, you know, just the, the traditional type of donuts that you would get at a donut shop. Or you can get the Voodoo Dozen, which has all the fun, interesting, different uh, types of donuts with like cap and crunch on the top, Oreo cookies crushed up, grape ape, which is my favorite. There's like a tang one, <laughs> all these fun, unique, different uh, donut options. So I thought, well, maybe what I'll do is just get like four donuts, two for me, two for my husband. And then I just was looking at the prices and it just made more sense to just go ahead and get the dozen. So I got a dozen donuts, the voodoo dozen. So the two of us have a dozen donuts to eat over the weekend, which uh, we will do that, which is not very smart because neither one of us should be eating a dozen donuts, but... Ha! Huh, I couldn't help myself. I love how that blended together. That is beautiful. And that's a really pretty sheeny shade. And it's a really nice color. So now, do I want to, I, I do, I mean, I want to brighten it up, but I also kind of want to keep it more earthy, you know? So I think I am going to go into the shade here. And that one was called Hansa, Hansa, and put that right there. So if you do have a Voodoo Donuts where you live, I would love to know what your favorite type of donut is from Voodoo. Mine is Grape Ape or the Tang one. I love it. And I also like the, uh, it's called Portland Cream. I don't know if it's called Portland Cream in every Voodoo Donut shop, but it is here. And I guess that's why I kind of thought it was just in Oregon, but I do think it's other places too. Uh, and it comes in that bright pink box and looks like Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> with the voodoo guy on the front with the top hat. I love that, or on the top, I guess, of the box. They're just so good. Also, I have ordered a microphone to film with. Uh, not, not that I think my sound is necessarily bad sounding, but I do think that like, it just sounds better with a microphone. Like I watch people that use microphones and I just think it sounds better. Uh, and I'm wondering if maybe that would help cancel out some of my background noise. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll make it worse. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't really know about that part of it. I don't really think about that. Go back in with this brush and just kind of blend around that shimmer shade right there. That is really a pretty shade. I like that. I like those two together. They look really nice. Uh, but it should be here. It might actually already be in my mailbox. I don't know. So I'll have to mess around and see how that works. Okay, so now... I think I'm going to go into this one now. This one again was called Deutsch Punk. I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to put the Kreuzberg shade towards the front. So we're doing four shimmery things across the lid or satiny things, shades <laughs> across the lid. And I really do need to wash my brushes this weekend. I'll do that probably tomorrow. 
And then my other plan to this weekend, I'm gonna spray this one, is to get all of my notes completed for my true crime video, because I'm gonna have that up on the 31st. I wanted to have it up this Sunday, but this video is gonna go up Sunday rather than my true crime, just because I didn't have enough time to really invest in getting her done. Yeah, I like that, that's nice. It's kind of brightening things up as it goes across my lid, I like it. And things are meshing together pretty well. I will go over the top of a couple of these shades, so I'm sure with my finger, just to make sure it looks nice and mushy together. So now I'm gonna go into Kreuzberg and put that right towards the front. Now this actually, I've actually done used this, I think over the top of this before. It's, it's really a nice topper shade too, but I do think you can use it by itself. I've done that before too. So what are your guys' plans for the weekend? What are you guys gonna be up to? Anything fun and exciting? I'd love to hear about that. Uh, I do think one of the things my husband and I have planned is to get caught up on American Idol because we're really into that show and we got pretty far behind on that. Ooh, yeah. So I think we need to cut up, get caught up on like three or four episodes. That looks really nice. Oh yeah, I love that. That's really pretty. Nice color combo, I think. I wasn't too sure what I was gonna do, but I like this color combo, especially with the kind of terracotta matte. That looks nice, I think. Very earthy, grungy colors. I wouldn't say this is an earth or grungy look. I think it's just grungy colors. Uh, okay, I'm gonna kind of clean this, this brush off just a little bit so there's no real shadow on it. And I'm just gonna go around the edge here and just blend that because it is kind of harsh looking. And if it doesn't get the way I want it, like soft enough, I will use my e.l.f. contour palette, that shade, out of it. But I don't think I need to actually. This is working pretty good. I thought about maybe putting the Kreuzberg shade under my brow too, maybe a little bit, but that might look kind of funky. So I don't think I'm gonna do that this time around. The one thing though I do wanna do is I wanna go back into Love Parade and kind of put, just put a little bit more of that out here because I feel like it's not as deep as I want it to be. I mean, I could put the black out there, but since I did that in my last look, I don't wanna do the same type of, you know, I mean, it's different color scheme, of course, but trying to see how much depth I can get out of the Love Parade shade today, rather than adding the black in. Yeah, okay, oops, I got some hair fuzz on my, and then I'll blend out the edge of that a little bit too. Yeah, I really like this, and honestly, I don't think I need to go into my, with my finger at all. I think this turned out really nice. So what I'll do is I'll go off camera, of course, do my other eye and my face, and I will come back. So this is finished look number two. And I love how this look turned out. And I was trying to decide which look is my favorite out of the two that I created for this video. And I don't know that I can pick a favorite. I loved both looks. And there is a definite reason why this palette was my favorite from Nomad for a very long time. And it's still up there. I mean, it's a very close second to the Royal Europe. So I will show you the palette again, review it with you, talk to you about the shades that I use and all that fun stuff. But let me show you just a few things I threw on my face for my finished look. On my lips, I started off again with the VE Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in the shade Persephone. Now, if you look at this, it's got a really neat kind of burgundy and green flip to it. But for whatever reason, that flip does not show up on my lips. It just looks like a black liquid lipstick. And my friend Tracy said, shake it up really good. And I did. I mean, I spent a long time shaking this lip product. And it just doesn't really show the burgundy and the green. I don't know. And it's a really nice formula. It's very creamy. It does dry down to look more, you know, like a liquid lipstick looks a little bit dry on the lips but it's got a really lovely formula. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it just does not show up. The flip does not show up on my lips. So I thought, let's do something fun. Let's jazz this up a little bit. So I grabbed the NYX Professional Makeup. This is the Duo Chromatic Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Cocktail Party. Now I got this, of course, as a liquid eyeshadow and it just doesn't dry down on my eyelids. It just stays very emollient and it gets very creasy. So I thought, you know what? Let's use this as a lip product. And you can't really tell, I don't think, in the camera, but it does have a really pretty gold and peach uh, shifty stuff going on, or like uh, 
emphasis on my lips and I think it's really nice. It does feel a little sticky on my lips, it does, but not horribly so. Then for my lower water lines, I use one of my Moira Cosmetics duochrome or multi-chrome eyeliners in the shade Squire. It's got like the orange and green and kind of like a gold and reddish uh, shifty stuff going on. Really pretty and really fun to use in my lower water lines. And I have used a couple of these so far and they stay really well in my lower water line. So that's fun. Great product and very affordable. And then for my upper lids, I line them with the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Super Slim 12 hour felt tip liner in the shade brown. I was gonna go with one of my pot gel liners and I don't know. I, I just, I struggle with those sometimes. It was kind of maybe not the best decision for me to buy those. I will use them, but I just was like, do I use yellow or red or orange? And what if that looks weird? And I don't know. <laughs> I just went with uh, something that I was a little bit more secure and stable for me. And then for my mascara, I did use the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effects Mascara. So, okay, now let's talk about the palette, the Nomad Cosmetics Berlin Underground. This is such a wonderful palette, as creaky as it is when I open it, it's still a wonderful palette. And I just love all the tones in here, vampy, sexy, earthy, grunge, bright, dark, medium, you know, you, you get everything, I think, out of this palette. I do, I do know that like some people don't love the satiny consistency in eyeshadows and this is chock full of them. So if you're not real into satins, then maybe this wouldn't work for you. But what I will say is that even though they're satiny, most of these shades do really perform like a matte. You know what I mean? Like you can put them in your transition area, you can put them on your lower lash lines. Uh, you know, none of the shades are obviously sparkly or, um, you know, super wow, like it's overly sparkly, but they do have a beautiful sheen to them and they're just really easy to put together. Like looks are not difficult to put together with this palette. And I, I felt like with my first look anyway, I used maybe some different shades go, to go together than I would normally would do, but that was really fun and I think it turned out really well. And to use you know, more um, neutral tones in this look, uh, I still think it turned out really pretty and everything works so well. And this is just a blast to have in my collection. It's still, it's still one of my very favorites from No Bad. It's just right under the Royal Europe. And of course, this is no longer available. You might be able to find it like on Mercari or Poshmark or something like that, but I'm really thrilled to have it in my collection. And it will always be one of my very favorite palettes that I own. And I would love to know if you guys have this palette and what your experiences are like with the palette. And also let me know in the comment section, which look you like the best, look number one or look number two. We can chat about that in the comment section. And also I'd love to know what shade combos you like to put together out of this palette. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your lives to sit down and watch this video. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing, smash the like button, and of course, comment down below in the comment section. I love to chat with you guys there. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I cannot wait to see you guys again in my next video, but in the meantime, please take very good care of yourself. Be well, safe, happy, and of course, I'll see you soon. Bye. Drop it.